Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on high-performance computing. Today, my guest is from IBM. We have Richard Talbot. He is the Director of Big Data, Analytics, and Cloud Infrastructure at the company. Richard, how are you doing today? Oh, great, great. Great to have you on the show. You know, I watched uh, IBM's uh, uh, Open Power Innovation Summit a launch event, but I thought it'd be good to kind of get down into the nitty gritty today with uh, and learn more about the Power 8 systems that you guys are rolling out. So, so Richard, why don't we do that? Let, let's go through your slide deck and then we'll do okay. a QA and a at the hey, end. Hey Richard, it's an exciting time to be a part of the Power uh, brand. I was actually at the event in San Francisco earlier this week and it was exciting to see not only the, the breadth of the membership in the Open Power Foundation, the number of members we have now, uh, and the, the presence that they you know, create or represent within the industry and hyperscale as well as more, more traditional types of environment. But the, the potential of working with these partners and the innovation that we, 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 we know will come uh, from that and is already arriving um, is pretty exciting uh, for us um, as well. I just, uh, within the, the context of the, the, the presentation slides, I, let's shift to page two for a second. The open power, I think um, it was really interesting in the announcement of the Open Power Foundation. NVIDIA, Mellanox, and Tyann were, were fairly natural partnerships. And I don't think there were many surprises um, when we announced those relationships. But the real surprise, I think, in the attention getting part um, of the Open Power announcement is that Google um, is a significant, not only just a member of the Open Power Foundation, but a significant uh, contributor and player within that environment. Um, uh, Gordon was there at the event yesterday, and he articulated uh, very clearly that you know Google thinks that there's a significant competitive advantage. They they, they believe they can create by using a, a hybrid environment, which includes the you know the, the performance and benefits of the power architecture within their very you know large hyperscale. Uh, internet data center environments. Um, so it's been exciting to work with them. We meet with them on a regular basis. We'll, uh, we're we're exchanging, you know, ideas and you know future direction. And we're even within IBM taking a lot of the, you know, the the information that we get about you know how that environment works um, and building you know features that we think are relevant into our next generation systems as a result of that. So a, re- a re- really key part of the foundation and a significant part of the you know, the, the significance of the, the innovation that we believe will come from uh, the foundation. On page three, the, the opportunity that we, that behind the, you know, just open innovation uh, is real. You know, it's in the form of billions of dollars. Um, and uh, the, 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 the opportunity that represents not only for IBM, but also our partners in the foundation is, is pretty substantial. And obviously, they believe that, or they wouldn't be investing the, the significant amount of time and, and number of resources that, that they're investing uh, from their companies to participate and contribute directly to, to this forum. Also, the, um, it's no surprise that you know, the world of big data is upon us, um, and the effect that that has on the way we design and even design the, the new Power 8 systems that we're, we're rolling out now. Um, is pretty profound. Some of the technology advantages of the power processor as well as the architecture of the systems with huge memory capacity, high memory I.O. Uh, bandwidth and low latency capabilities, the integration of devices from Mellanox and NVIDIA in a unique and powerful way over standard interface mechanisms like PCI Gen 3 you know, gives us a pretty significant competitive advantage in the ingest and then analysis of the big data applications that are becoming much more representative um, of the, you know, the enterprise space uh, as well. Uh, and then the whole world of cloud. You know, I think that five or ten years ago that was an interesting concept, but it's real today for bursting and all sorts of other applications. And I work personally a lot in the life sciences and healthcare uh, part of our business and with our clients that, that occupy that space. And some of the legislative guidelines around HIPAA compliance, for example, has been clarified. and opened up the use of cloud resources in places that were previously you know, kind of off limits because of the perceived security uh, requirements or exposures and some of the liabilities that might come uh, from that. So you know, a lot of new, renewed interest in cloud economics and the efficiencies of managing 
having someone else manage the infrastructure uh, and making those applications available to their clients, you know, via cloud-based delivery models is is really a, becoming a much more compelling uh, option for many of our clients today. And the products that we're announcing, as well as the infrastructure around the products, is fine-tuned and and available and optimized for that type of environment. On page four, um, I mean, we can talk all day long about performance attributes of the power architecture, but generally speaking, we're pretty proud of the technology as well. Uh, we're not, you know, gen from from generation to generation of if we're just looking at pure processor technology, you know, Moore's law has flattened out for us, and frequency no longer adds value. Uh, we're at the point in the physics of semiconductor technology where you just can't pass electrons through these circuits any faster than we are today. So we've kind of met our match from that perspective. But integration of additional cores and processing capability on the the KEC or within the KEC on a single chip is you know where it's at in this time frame and going forward. So we have more cores um, as well as you know higher levels of integration of uh, memory and I/O control technology on the processor itself, um, and some of the op optimization that we've enabled via you know the CAPI interface on the Power8 technology will enable us to announce you know much faster than normal um, uh, additions to the the, the KEC like you know high bandwidth, low latency network infrastructure, and high bandwidth, low latency CPU and GPU alignment with our partners like Mellanox and Nvidia, just as an example. So you'll see, you know, more than just 20 or 30 or 40 percent performance improvement in some of these applications. You'll see factors, you know, better performance improvement uh, coming from the exploitation of those types of features of the architecture of these systems. For example, on the Watson project, we've been working very closely with our software group uh, colleagues on the porting optimization of Watson on Power, and we have you know double-digit faster than Power 7 numbers that we're posting up now for Watson on Power 8 uh, between the Power 8 systems that we produce today and the Power 7 systems that we launched Watson with back in the Watson Jeopardy Challenge timeframe. So it's not uncommon to see you know not just factor uh, performance benefits, but you know, double-digit factor performance improvement um, when we really and truly optimize and take advantage of the core technology and the enablers within the system architecture itself. On page five, uh, this this slide just really represents a, the pretty broad spectrum of what we would describe as the Linux ecosystem around uh, the not only just open power, but our power systems business as well. It all starts with open power and have a broader range of distros um, supporting the power technology. Ubuntu we're announcing with Power 8 as a very high profile and mainstream uh, Linux distro available on the platform now. Uh, KVM and OpenStack are componentry coming from that environment. Um, you know, gives us quite a bit of virtualization and openness within that layer of the, the hypervisor, you know, the, that element of the hardware software stack as well. And a very positive reception that we're getting from a lot of our clients that um, have been uh, interested in using that much more broadly within their enterprise. And then just a lot of focus on building out the ecosystem and optimizing or making optimization of those applications on power you know, much more accessible and easier to you know, developers across a broad range of application spaces. On page six, the Open Power Consortium really represents um, the platinum members we have across the top, but there's a total of 26 partners, and we're adding more almost every day. Um, but the vision for open power, power, this chart really captures, because from the technology that we build within the fab and the design of the processor itself, all the way up to the operating system and applications that run on top of the platform, every aspect or every facet of the architecture of these systems is open now. So I think it's fair to say and legitimate to say that this is potentially one of the first open compute platforms that has existed within the industry, uh, given that you know, things below the processor in the past um, you know, have been off limits from that perspective. But we have partners in the foundation today that are taking the power technology, that architecture, and doing you know, innovation at that level, producing derivatives of the Power 8 chip itself, and optimizing for their application space and use cases. We have other members of the foundation doing you know, chip level integration of their technology like NVIDIA. And we announced with NVIDIA 
was pretty exciting at the GPU Technology Conference uh, two or three weeks ago to announce NVLink, which represents a unique um, IBM and NVIDIA technology and a way for us to attach and eliminate some of the latencies and bandwidth issues we've had with GPUs and CPU integration of GPUs uh, in that application space. So partnerships in that area will give us, again, unprecedented uh, performance and capability uh, to integrate or bring the data a lot closer to the processor and storage complex of the system. You know, from an I.O. and memory perspective, Mellanox is a pretty high profile member of the foundation will be attaching Mellanox devices, uh, you know, using the CAPI interface that we've talked about uh, in other conversations and, you know, and announcing, you know, capabilities there that, we, you know, you just wouldn't have access to in other architectures and so on. One of the most exciting parts from a system developer perspective, Tyann and these other companies within the system design and development space will make it possible for, to get power-based technology and systems from non-IBM sources. Um, and, you know, the level of sophistication within that environment is pretty high, Rich, as you may know. Um, it doesn't, I mean, the, the level of infrastructure and technical capability that these companies have is pretty substantial. I um, mean, a lot of our partners, like Google, for example, will go directly to these suppliers with little more than just a sketch and, you know, high-level framework of the type of system they a need to serve their, you know, the most important part of their businesses. And within a month or two, Tyann is capable of turning that around into, you know, hardware bring up platforms and systems within a short period of time after that. Uh, that range from, you know, ultra low cost, ultra high density systems to, you know, larger two and four way or four socket capable machines and, you know, more sophisticated infrastructure if that's called for as well. So, not only would our clients have access to power systems from IBM that exploit these innovations, but they'll also have access to non-IBM sources to do even more, you know, deeper levels of customization within the system design itself. And that opens up another level of, you know, broader level of uh, support for power within the ecosystem for, for attaching or, or, or going after a broader range of workloads on the platform. So that, that really represents or is just a little bit of a thumb shell of the, you know, the theme and the vision behind the Open Power Foundation. It's really an exciting framework for us to be working in. It gives us a lot of access to clients that we haven't, you know, don't norm haven't traditionally had access to, to be honest, within, the, you know, the large and growing, fastest growing parts of the industry. Uh, so we're excited about that and the partnerships. Uh, the tone of the partnerships has been just really, really upbeat and exciting. It's great to see the level of enthusiasm for the collaboration that ha is occurring there already uh, coming from um, these high-profile members of the industry. So one of the most recent announcements that we, we, one of the most recent membership additions to the foundation was Rice University. They were featured, Rich, as you may recall, at uh, the announcement on um, Wednesday. And uh, the collaboration that they've been building with some of the, their partners in the Texas Medical Center and the targets that they've given themselves to address some pretty complex compute and storage challenges within the world of genomics medical treatment options, you know, using genomic data to, to, to enhance the diagnostic capabilities and treatment options for the patients of the, the institutions within the Texas Medical Center, which is one of the largest and wealthiest medical institutions on the planet. Um, is pretty exciting. So there's some second-order benefits of this Open Power Foundation and the thinking that's coming from, you know, this spirit of collaboration and partnering with others to do things that we wouldn't be able to do independently is uh, contagious and catching on in other places as well. Cameron Kahn, the CIO at Rice, talked for a minute about that on Wednesday and the partnership with other, you know, not only partnering or bringing to bear the research capacity they have within the university setting, but also the partnerships that they are creating with um, large household name institutions within the medical center um, is really exciting. You know, maybe even profound to think about the, the ways that they might be able to accelerate the use of those types of methods that exist currently in the, you know, minds of researchers today from, from bench to bedside is uh, really exciting um, as well. So um, ultimately on page seven uh, now, um, uh, this is the range of products that we're announcing today or next week within the power systems portfolio. A lot of the 
innovation within the Open Power Foundation that we uh, have been talking about mostly uh, over the last year or so well, is already manifesting itself in, the, in these products. So for, for, for us, we feel like we've been you know, making promises for uh, almost a year about things to come and strategy and high-level thinking. And you know, it's exciting to be able to announce the first fruit and the real evidence and you know, product-level content uh, that uh, represents the first few you know, pretty significant milestones of the benefit of our work with companies like NVIDIA, for example, um, and Google, and Tyann, and Mellanox, and others uh, happening so quickly. So we've been very focused in uh, working with them on a daily, you know, reg very regular, sometimes even daily basis to launch Power7 with as much of that componentry and the you know, elegant integration of some of that technology within these systems um, as they leave the factory floor you know, beginning this quarter. So very exciting to have a fairly broad range of products. Uh, these are our most popular and high volume products within the power systems portfolio. It represents a pretty broad range of one and two socket systems uh, within the product family. Continues the heritage of Linux and fully optimized for Linux systems that we've announced previously in the Power 7 and Power 7 Plus time frame. And also the 4U product, which is another very popular part of our product family, has quite a bit of in-the-box expansion capability and room to grow uh, for a lot of applications. And these systems support up to 20 or 24 cores within the two socket environment and over a terabyte of memory um, and huge internal storage and you know, I.O. expansion capability. So you know, two years ago, Rich, we called these systems mid-range products because the CPU throughput and performance capability is just so high in a you know, very small and very affordable form factor now. Um, it's very exciting, you know, what the things that we can do uh, within that, you know, the, the, the compute capacity these systems have, even at the what we would, you know, previously have referred to as the low end of our product family. This is all about scale out. So we we are working in environments where uh, it'll be clusters of these systems, you know, um, working together with other storage componentry from uh, IBM as well as other providers and some pretty high-profile announcements that we'll, we'll be making about applications and optimization of applications on the platform that, are, um, that we're pretty excited about. So that's it just from a slide presentation. If you had any questions or thoughts or comments, it would be great to... Well, well, thanks for that, Richard. You know, I, I wanted to ask you about the, the one particular machine that they rolled out on stage uh, this week. And I believe it was based on the 822, but it, uh, if I remember correctly, it was uh, 20 of these 2U devices in Iraq, or, and it was, uh, they said it had 100 terabyte capacity for in-memory analytics. I, I wanted to ask you about that, I mean, particularly in the space where you're f coming from with, with life sciences. What, what might they be able to do with such so that, a device? Rich, that's, a, that's a breakdown of both uh, the in-system memory up to a terabyte of memory per system unit within the rack, and then the expansion of effective memory capacity that we have uh, using Flash. Um, we, as you may know, we acquired a company a couple of years ago called, called Texas Memory Systems to help us accelerate the, not only the development but also the integration of Flash technology. And Power 7 or Power 8 now enables us to attach memory much closer or attach Flash much closer to the processor tech than we have been able to in the past. So in many applications, you can actually use or extend the memory capacity of these systems using Flash as a legitimate part, you know, not quite as fast, but also not quite as expensive as real memory. So you can enhance substantially the virtual memory capacity of these systems by using Flash. And the example that Doug used on the live stream um, is, is, again, the world of genomics, where the amount of information that a doctor might need and then you know, produce as a result of analyzing an individual's DNA structure to diagnose and treat a complex disease process could easily exceed over a terabyte of data. And so we don't need to necessarily have 100,000 patients you know, in memory or in flash to, for that to happen. It's a much smaller number, but being able to process or have at ready access like that within a single rack of these systems over 100 patients uh, information gives them the ability to turn that analysis around much more quickly than they have been able to in the past and not have to reach out as far in their storage infrastructure to, to access, process, update, 
that information, you know, as it is required in that uh, environment. You know, the whole idea of genomics medicine is to be able to not only diagnose a patient fairly at a very low level in their DNA structure, but also provide treatment options for the patient, you know, quickly. Because after a certain period of time, the patient's condition may change so much, the useful value of that information is substantially less than it would have been if it, you know, we can turn that around in hours, maybe minutes. So that's a great, a great example um, of how we can, you know, you having that much memory and flash capacity within a single system like that, um, you know, creates a real opportunity for us to change the profile of, of complex disease treatment, you know, worldwide. You know, coming from the HBC audience, as we do, you know, I was really intrigued by what the, the ULIC, uh, the center in Germany, that's, they've long been a, a blue jean shop, of course, but... Uh, you know, they're doing. They're getting funding for a lot of exascale research, and uh, I wanted to ask you about that. I mean, being able to get under the hood of power and maybe produce derivatives. Do you, do you think that's the kind of thing they might be looking at here at ULIC? That's exactly what we're proposing for that space. Um, we think the tight, not only the power architecture in general, but also the tight integration of both GPU and high-speed interconnect is a real key for the next generation of these HPC class machines. And so you'll see us announce and you'll see our partners announce derivatives of these products that have been fully optimized for that type of environment um, where we have, you know, GPU intensive applications or applications that benefit from that. We'll have systems that were designed to feature and exploit a large number of GPUs per system image uh, within that, you know, system unit or that system architecture. and you know, same for high-speed interconnect and low-latency communications between nodes within an infrastructure like that. So that's a real exciting capability that we have with this infrastructure and this approach as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, Richard, I want to kind of wrap up here and talk a little bit about ecosystems because you, you brought this up. And I see this as, as a challenge for uh, Open Power Foundation in that uh, the power architectures always had formidable benchmarks, but it was never cheap. Right, so so where are you going to get the economies of scale to to make this an affordable technology? Yeah, I I um, you know, there's nothing like working with companies like Google, for example, to really understand at a a thoughtful level um, the TCO equation that you know our clients and some of the the companies and the, the the that are really leaders in building data center infrastructure using, you know, very aggressive and highly constraining TCO models, which really defines the competitiveness of their business. And so, you know, we've, we've definitely been, you know, had very strong presence in the mid-range and high end. That's still a substantial part of our business. And we've been able to, to extend the technology down to, you know, small 2U and blade form factors in the past. Um, as well, so that's a significant accomplishment. But it's clear that we, you know, have to do better, move faster in that direction. Uh, so the challenge, you know, for us is clear. Um, not only in the you know energy efficiency, but footprint and cost performance advantage um, is really clear and becoming you know um, a pretty key part of the culture now of our culture now as a part of these as, as a benefit or side effect of these partnerships with companies that really rely on that to be successful in their industries so it's changed the profile in the way that we think about system design and again you'll see some very high TCO uh, numbers um, coming from these systems as we you know benchmark for our clients everybody calculates TCO differently but I think what you're really talking about is you know cost of ownership and cost of acquisition and what's important to each individual client might vary from use case to use case, but we're becoming much more sensitive to that and using very different metrics for defining success within the design of the systems that we produce as well as the, you know, helping our clients be successful in that space as well. Yeah, yeah, you know, and then looking at your partners in Open Power Foundation, the only one I would really say, what, where could I buy this from besides IBM, I would say would be Inspur, at this point, Richard, do you anticipate there might be, you know, tens or even hundreds of companies selling uh, power systems in the future? 
Uh, that's the hope. Uh, Tyann will actually be the one of the first product, first uh, system providers uh, that we work with. They they have been in the systems business somewhat on the x86 side of their business, and we hope to enable them to provide uh, potentially a broader range of both systems and infrastructure that goes along with them. Um, and then we'll be taking some of these some of those systems and potentially uh, branding them as well. Um, but yeah, the, the the vision or dream is that, um, or the vision and strategy is to enable as many system level providers to produce different form factors optimized for different workloads. You know, as we as we find partners interested in doing that and coming up with, you know, options for their clients that give them a choice, as well as you know that has motivated Google and others to to look here for where the future of their business might reside. Sure, sure. You know, Google's known as one of the biggest uh, consumers of servers in the world, and they're their own customer. So uh, <laughs> it's a, a, right. a huge market there for you. Well, well Richard, this has been fascinating, and uh, I want to thank you for coming on the show today. Rich, thanks for inviting me. I enjoyed it. You bet, you bet. Okay, folks, that's it for the Rich Report. Stay tuned for more news and information on high-performance computing.